good, it's good. Oh, are we good? We're going to have it on? Yeah, now we got to go in there. All right, let me put this down. Good morning, everybody. This is a little different than uh, when I was here at Canyon years ago. They don't ever make these for normal-sized people, so I don't know if I can get this up where it's supposed to go or not. If it's stay up, ooh, yes, it's even going to stay up. That'll be good if it'll do that there. I haven't been back to Canyon since there have been a lot of the things that are changing around here. Used to do a lot with Gabe, and so it's fun to see him up here leading worship this morning. Does he have a great voice or what? What a blessing to, to have him lead us in worship here. I used to do a bunch of the times over at Salt and uh, First Southern. And this morning, we don't have much time to get right into what we're going to talk about, so I really want us to get started here this morning. I heard that you guys have been talking a lot during these chapel times on stories, Jesus' stories and the stories he tells. I love that because I believe Jesus was the greatest storyteller of all time. I believe he knew how to tell a great story, and I don't mean that in a, well, he was telling stories that really wasn't the truth. No, he would use stories to bring out truth. And I want to be as much like Jesus as I can, so this morning I just want to sort of look at one of those stories and see if we can take it a little deeper. To do so, we're going to look, and I know it's going to be up on the screen as well, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 13, and one of the stories that Jesus used to, with his disciples and with other people. I'm going to put my old man glasses on now, since I'm now 57, but I have 14 grandchildren, so that's okay. I don't mind being 57 when you got all those grandkids. And let's look at Matthew chapter 13. 13, and I want to read, first of all, the first nine verses, and let's kind of set this up. It goes right in and it says, in verse 1 of chapter 13, Later that same day, Jesus left the house and went down to the shore, where an immense crowd soon gathered. He got into a boat, where he sat and taught as the people listened on the shore. He told many stories, such as this one. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The plants sprang up quickly, but they soon wilted beneath the hot sun and died because the roots had no nourishment in the shallow soil. Other seeds fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades. But some seeds fell on fertile soil and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. You ever wonder why Jesus would tell stories like that? And it didn't always make sense when people are going, yeah, I don't really understand what you're talking about. And they really would struggle with that. In fact, I love it what it says here in verse 10. It says, his disciples came and asked him, why do you always tell stories when you talk to the people? Actually, I think what the disciples were doing, I don't think the disciples really understood this either. And it was kind of like that, uh, hey, I know this guy that's really struggling with that story that you're telling there. When really, I think it was them that was struggling as much as anybody else. They were going, I don't really get this, Jesus. What are you talking about here? And what we have to understand is that unless God opens our eyes to the truth of his word, you're not going to understand it. The Bible makes it very clear that we are blinded to truth until God's spirit opens our eyes. It tells us in John chapter 6, verse 44, it says, unless the spirit of God draws you and opens your eyes to truth, you can't get saved. You can't even be saved unless God does that. He does everything to bring us to Him. So if we're going to understand anything today, it's going to be because God opens our spiritual eyes and helps us to see. In fact, Jesus goes on in verse 16, and He says, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. I assure you, many prophets and godly people have longed to see and hear what you have heard, what you have seen and heard, but they could not. Now I got to ask you this morning: Are you ready to receive something? Not because of me speaking. I just prayed with Tim before I got up here, and I was so thankful because he said he, he was basically praying, saying, "God, we're desperate for you to do something." See, I don't have any good words. This big 610 dummy can't tell you anything that's worthwhile. If it doesn't come from God, nothing good is going to happen during this morning's chapel time. So are you ready to receive from God speaking to you? And don't, don't give me the, oh yeah, well, of course I am. You know, I'm here at chapel. Look at me, babe. No, we can be here at chapel and not get anything out of it, or you can get a lot out of it by you saying, God, really, I want to hear from you this morning. So I want us to just stop and ask God to give us eyes to see, ears to hear this morning. Would you just join me in prayer quickly this morning? Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would help us to hear from you. I don't have good words. I'm bankrupt of good words, God. Only you have words of life. So I pray this morning that we would hear from you, that we would see the things you want us to. Would you open our eyes that we would see as you would show us things. 
And we thank you ahead of time for that and give you glory and praise for it. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it goes right on, right after Jesus says that, and he starts to explain it. Now, it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says something interesting. It says, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church, to the Corinthian church, and he says this. He says, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. He says, test yourselves. Do you not realize that you're in Christ Jesus? Unless, of course, you fail the test. See, he's telling the people in the church, saying, hey, take a test and make sure you're where you need to be with Almighty God. That's what I want you to do this morning as we look at these scripture passages. I want you to just say, God, hey, I'm willing to take a test this morning. I know you're sick and tired of tests. This is a different one. You don't have to write a thing down. All you got to do is listen to God and let him speak to you this morning. But let's see if God can't show us where we are of these four seeds that we just read about. Okay, it starts right off in verse 18. It says, now here is the explanation of the story I told about the farmer sowing grain. Now, verse 19, it says, the seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the good news about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches the seed away from their hearts. Apparently, and we're talking about the seed is the good news. The seed that is being thrown out, as Jesus is talking about this seed being thrown out, he says, as the good news of the gospel is being thrown out, the question is, where is it gonna land on your heart? In your heart, where is it gonna hit for you? Now that first one, I brought some examples, some illustrations here along, or kind of some object lessons that we're going to look at as we go through this. Now the first one's kind of like a CD I got a while back from a friend. I got a friend that's a cowboy pastor of a cowboy church in Texas. Okay, he's a pretty cool guy, and, and I really like him, good guy, but I'm not into country western music. I just, I'm sorry if you are, I just, that's just, that's not, I mean, it's okay, but it's not something I go, yeah, I'm going to rock out with some country western, I don't do that. And so it's not something I was really that excited about when I got his CD. In fact, the title of it's Cowboy Up, you know? <laughs> now, I like my horses. I live in Colorado, we got a ranch in Colorado, and I like my horses and all that stuff. But, and I like to cowboy up on my horses, but I'm just not into country western music. So when I got this, I saw it, and I was like, and it's a Christian country western CD. And I got it and I went, that's great, John, that's super okay, thanks. Yeah. It's still not been unwrapped. I got that a year ago and I've still not unwrapped it. You know why? See, John's a good man and he, this has got good messages. One of them's a, it's a, a different version of Amazing Grace that's on there. It's got good, a good message of hope and salvation on there. But I just really wasn't that interested. And see, that's the way some people are with the gospel. They hear the gospel and they're kind of like, and I, it sounds all right, but no thanks. And they pass on it. Okay, that's the first seed. And that fell on hard soils. Absolutely, there's no question about it. We realize that person does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, then it goes on. And Jesus in the second one says, The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. And at first they get along fine, but they wilt as soon as they have problems or are persecuted because they believe the word. The second group apparently, man, it went in, but it was not very deep. There wasn't a whole lot of soil there, and it hit rock, and so it, it made it a problem. I brought something with me. This is embarrassing that I'm bringing these along, but I got, you have to understand, I did go to school here back in the 70s here at Grand Canyon. And I want you to know, I was one stylish rascal back in the 70s. You know, and being 6'9", 6 6'10", 6 it's kind of tough to be stylish anyway, you know. I mean, it's really hard to do that. But I tried hard. And trust me, I knew how to do that. That's what I'm talking about. We're talking 70s, yeah. Nice, huh? I actually wore these here at Grand Canyon in the 70s. This was a pair, I've kept them kind of as a joke at this point, and I wear them every once in a while if I want to do the, uh, the uh, Saturday Night Fever type of thing or something like that, you know, and uh, they're real double knit. We're talking serious bell bottom. Now, I loved it when those babies came in. Let me tell you why. I loved them because I have a size 16 shoe. And when you got a size 16, 
You don't look real cool when you wear those stupid... Uh, why are you guys bringing back narrow pants? Don't do that to me! It's killing me! I hate narrow pants! Do you know what that does to this big 16? Whenever you put a narrow pant on that there, that's not cool. So I loved bell bottoms. They made my feet look smaller. I, I look good in bell bottoms, you know? And, and so I liked my bell bottoms, and I wore those babies. I'm proud of them, man. Double knit. This is the real deal, you know? And I wore those things, and I loved them. Until... They went out of style. <laughs>